Now getting stuff for free is great, but if it wasn't for this camera standing here in front of me, I wouldn't be getting that opportunity. And I don't want to skew away from how this channel started, which was doing stuff on a budget where you can, just like a normal person in the street could. Um, I'm about to add a lot of additions to my 12 volt setup today, and I could have gone to a major player and said, hey, I want this or that, or that, or that and got a crazy ass system that's, don't get me wrong, best quality, greatest performance, everything like that, but it would have been super expensive and me two years ago wouldn't even consider of getting something like that because it would have been way out of my price range. Um, so today, I'm doing something different. So I think this logo is gonna immediately get a few of you typing away in the comments saying, I'm an idiot for buying King's gear. Because yes, I bought all this gear here from Ball Drive Supercenter yesterday with my own money. 110 watt solar panel for the car, an MPPT solar controller, again Kings, some brackets to make for the solar panel to make my life easy, uh, some cabling that I'm gonna cut up because I wasn't sure we had enough dual coil left in the shed. I bought a 1500 watt inverter for I think it was $230. Last time I checked it, other people who made inverters, uh, you speak a grand upwards or anything like that. So all up, I spent 400 and I think it was $29 uh, yesterday at 4 Drive Supercenter to get all this. Now that's dirt cheap for this gear. The question is, is it gonna all work and perform? So over the entire summer, I'm gonna be testing this gear and at the end of this video, I'll give you my results of what broke, what lasted, what worked, and you'll know for yourselves. So a lot of you are gonna be saying, why are you buying cheap Chinese crap? And yes, it is Chinese. I don't know how crap it actually is gonna be though. We'll see, that's a work out in today's video. Um, but the reason I did buy a cheaper, you know, obviously cheaper stuff is because, well, one, I'm doing it for the video, and also, I'm gonna be using this inverter once in a blue moon anyway, so I don't need it to be state-of-the-art. Um, so even if I was to get a really good one given to me, it would be a waste, because I'm not, if I was living out of my car doing van life, sure, I'd get the best of the best, but this isn't, I'm not living out of my car all the time, so just a, a cheapy inverter, inverter, just to charge the laptops here and there, um, is all I really needed. And on the solar panel, I bought the solar panel, this was $94 for 110 watt, and Liam's running a 110 watt King's panel that he bought second hand of someone else. So I don't even know how many years that thing's been going, but it seems to have no issues. My solar blanket I've had for three and a half years plus, absolutely no issues. So I thought, you know, I think their solar stuff's pretty reliable, so got the solar panel, that's gonna go straight up on the roof, and then connect to my MPPT. This item is probably the only item I'm slightly worried about. I know they've changed their look of their MPPT stuff over the years. Like, obviously all this stuff is just Chinese knockoffs. So they go to a massive supplier and say, hey, we need 10,000 of these, put our label on them, and send them over to Australia in a big container ship. So, um, obviously, like, you're not getting the quality control well, the brands, but um, but as much as everyone gives Kings a lot of crap, um, I've had their fridge in my car for three years plus, no dramas. I've had their dual battery isolator in there, no issues. I've had a lot of their gear uh, and haven't had any issues with it. Look, I've known people that have had a lot of issues with their gear, but <clears throat> me personally, I'm on a winning streak, so hopefully today that streak doesn't end. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything on the car and then we'll go out and test it. 12 month warranty, at least I'm getting a warranty. Like I, instead of buying Kings, I'd usually just buy it off eBay. Um, there's some great deals to be had online there. Um, but I think with this, at least here, you can go back to a physical shop and um, take it there when stuff starts to break and not work anymore, so. First defect. That's pretty bad. Found our first defect. So these are just the cables I bought just to cut up. So I'm not actually gonna be using them really. So, but as you can see here, wires already cut into and exposed wiring. So that that's definitely not ideal. Imagine if you bought that to go camping and you had that exposed and then yeah, not great, not great. Now I cut off the MC4 connectors as I was gonna be extending the cable inside the cabin where I then connected to my 12 volt box. So as much as the MC4 cables are great if they're in the weather outdoors because they're waterproof, etc., I'd be connecting the panel straight up to my MPPT controller, which means I had no need for these plugs. And I also used the King solar panel brackets purely because I'm lazy and I didn't wanna to have to fabricate my own brackets for the solar setup. 
The brackets are nothing flash, but they're easy enough to get your panel mounted to pretty much any sort of roof rack. And with the panel mounted, it was time to wire it into the car to the MPPT controller inside of my 12 volt box. All right, so the solar controller is all installed, all running up in there nicely. Um, this is getting, it's becoming a bit of a mess in here. It's all fused and all proper, but it's just, yeah, it's getting a bit spaghetti-ish. Um, but anyway, it's working well. Charging the battery up there. So yeah, I haven't got my, um, I usually have a little watt meter which shows me how much current it's putting out, but currently it's broken. It's reading like 20 volts when it shouldn't be. So, um, but I'm gonna be doing that. I reckon the next mod is actually putting a little display gauge I'll wire up to the front of this panel and it'll tell me how many um, amps are coming in off the solar. So yeah, but now it seems to be working well. So yeah, now we'll move on to the main event. So, 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now, I think their old inverters are actually not too bad. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people like putting a decent amount of load on them and they still hold up. Uh, this is their newer sort of model, like it's got a new sort of design on it. I'll show you. Included wiring. And this is it. 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Actually, like it looks half decent. Like it actually looks pretty good. It's not too heavy, I think they re it's about four kilos, so it's not crazy. And yeah, it's got a little button, it's got a port on there, ready to go. We'll get this installed in the car. I'm kind of already mounted up on the cargo barrier. And then, um, yeah, wired up to our battery. And um, hopefully, we'll have 240 volt power in the 80 series. So, let's get onto it. 13.8 volts when the sun comes out. I'm definitely not gonna get tired of that. It's so handy just having a panel up there all the time. Just constantly topping out your battery. Anyway, on the inverter, I've got it mounted. I've decided to mount it up on the cargo barrier just for, it's convenient because it's out of the luggage area. It's luckily, it comes with cables, so I'm gonna wire this up to my battery. All right, so the inverter's wired up. I uh, still gotta add some zip ties to cable management, but it's wired up and I brought out a battery charger for the drill, which is 240. So first we'll just plug it on. Made a sound. Now if we plug in this. Oh my God. It's charging. There it goes. 240 volts. That's going. Voltage has dropped down to 12.7. And that's the battery finished because it's already basically full. How cool is that? Check it off. And it off. 240 in the car. That was so easy. That was too easy. Literally two cables to your battery and you got 240 volt. So yeah, interesting to see how the inverter goes on the trip. If you haven't noticed in the past month, we've been on a bit of a hiatus. Been traveling around Victoria, experiencing some of the awesome weather we have here in the summer. And it's been great just to use the car for what I've been building up to do over the past year. Hitting that high. What panel do you have? This is King's one, 110 watt. This is good. Cool. What am I saying? Do you normally do this in front of an audience? Nah. <laughs> so, right. We can turn around. Four times harder. Nah. We get, a, we get an early viewing on the episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, alright. <clears throat> alright, alright, alright. <laughs> um, so what happened last time I did that? Okay. Alright, you ready? Alright. All right, so we're out in the bush to finally test out that 12 volt gear. So last time you would have seen me installing the inverter, the MPPT controller, and the solar panel on the roof. So now we're out just outside of La Cola, actually at a really nice campsite. So how has it been going? I've been on the road for about four nights now. So I'll kind of sort of run you through what's broken. Um, unfortunately, a few things have broken this trip, um, but not to do with the 12 volt. So let me show you the 12 volt stuff. So the 12 volt box, and despite the corrugations of the high country, it's all holding together pretty well at the moment. So. Obviously the MPPT that I mounted the other day is still in here running. Um, the battery's right now sitting at about 12.6 volts, so it charges it fairly well. Like I've noticed a, a huge improvement in charging compared to the PWM controller. So I used to just run a solar blanket out, um, but now obviously I've got a fixed panel on the roof and it's not always in the sun. Like obviously I try and park in the shade where I can, so it's not in the sunniest position in the world. But um, because it's an MPPT controller, it does manage that a lot better than what a PWM would. So, um, got plenty of power coming into the car, and that's a 121, uh, 110 watt panel. And it's been no worries with the fridge, running the Raspberry Pi on the computer, um, and that's been all fantastic so far. 
So one thing that was a bit weird when I did install it was the voltages. When I was running the car, um, at the same time I had the panel on the roof, I was getting like 15.4 volts reading on my voltmeter, which is kind of alarming because I was like, hang on, is the, is the AGM sitting at 15 volts? It shouldn't really be because on that um, MPP control light, you can't adjust the float voltage or anything. On the old PWM one that had buttons there, you could like adjust the float, adjust what you wanted to cut off at. But with the King's one, you can't mess with any of it. It's all fixed. Um, so you can't change how the charging sort of pattern works. Um, but I think that's pretty much just, I'm seeing that high voltage because that's how much is coming in. Um, like it's, it's all the charging voltage, it's not actually the level of the battery. Um, because as soon as you disconnect the um, solar panel, it drops back down to like its standard 13.6 volts, whatever, when I'm driving. So um, that's one thing I did notice. Um, but yeah, I think it's just the charging status um, and charging voltage. And the inverter. So I haven't really been using this this trip because I also use these. I know the internet seems to hate butane now and everyone wants to be induction cooking, but induction cooking is still fairly expensive, especially for me. I don't have a lithium battery. Um, I don't have any of the induction gear and to overhaul this setup to be relevant for induction cooking um, would require a, a lot more batteries um, and probably a lot more solar power coming in. So for me, carrying a butane can is just as easy because think about how much energy is stored in one can, it's quite a lot. Um, but this is mainly for charging laptops, which I actually have been doing a bit of. So I've been charging my laptops, um, charging batteries for drills and stuff. It's been perfect so far. Um, I haven't obviously had it under crazy amounts of load forever, but it does actually charge quite well. It's only about four kilos, so it sits in here and hasn't been going anywhere, and it just does its job. For 230 bucks, for something I'm gonna use, you know, once in the blue moon to charge a laptop or a drill battery, um, really not too bad. And I found that the 110 watts panel is more than enough to do a fridge, you know, charge camera batteries, all that which I like to do out in the bush. So it's been fine. I do clean it um, every couple of days because as you see on these high country tracks, if you're at a convoy, you're getting covered in dust. So I do try and clean it um, just to give me the best charge possible throughout the day. Um, but the King's panel is holding up. It hasn't rattled off. I just use those King's um, brackets that I bought for it and they've all been fine so far. So no complaints on the panel. 110 watts is plenty for me, um, but obviously, you know, if you're doing more stuff, you might want to look at their bigger panels, but yeah, so far so good. All right, so now we're in February. It's been about a month and a half of having all that King's gear on the car. I can safely say it's all still working despite all the full driving, corrugated roads, um, and of course the hot weather. It's all still working fine, so that's great. And I'd also like to say thanks to everyone who's been buying stickers over the break. Like we haven't uploaded for an entire month, but I'm still going to the mailbox every few days to rub stickers. So. Thank you so much to everyone buying stickers. They're five bucks, free shipping Australia-wide. You can buy them at aussiearvers.com.au. So thanks for that, and uh, we'll continue on with the video. So I hope this video demonstrated that you don't need to spend thousands to get a half-decent solar setup, or battery setup, or charging setup, or any of that. And I'm not gonna get into the ethics about buying from Kings, because I'm gonna be, I'm the last person here to support Kings, but, um, it is, I'm not saying buy Kings, go on eBay, find some other gear that is affordable that you can buy, um, and I understand that obviously buying Australian made is great and we can do try and do it but for me personally for gear that I, that I wasn't going to use every day that didn't need to be super essential quality um, I was happy to go on a budget setup to get a setup that still gets me out here in the outdoors gets me exploring gets me charging my gear and what I'm saying is you don't need the best of the best to get out here and explore the outdoors um, if you're on a budget obviously just buy budget gear and if you got the money buy better gear in my case I didn't have heaps of money to spend on a crazy ass setup so I bought King's here and I think it'll do fine for me for my personal reasons and setup but obviously buy what you want for your setup but just don't put off buying gear because you don't have the right money buy what you can to get you out exploring because you know life's not you don't live forever so get out there and enjoy it while you can all right so that's the end of the video I'll give you an update on how this panel's going in six or four months time uh, and we'll see how long it's lasted but I got pretty high hopes for it it's 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 simple technology that Yes, it's made from China, but they should be able to nail simple things like that. So, so we'll see how it lasts, and um, yeah, we might actually crank up the inverter and get some heavier stuff running it too, and see how that inverter ha ha holds out. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you enjoyed. Hope you're out here having a good time in the, in the uh, outback or wherever you are in Victoria or Australia, and um, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.